Season 8, Episode 3, The Long Night, was the fucking Moses of fandom division. Not like it's anything new for the show, I mean, the fandom has been pretty divided for a while, but I would say that this episode broke records in the polarizing opinions department. And I do think it's fascinating because it shows how differently human brains can interpret the same thing. I will make it clear in this video where I stand. And I may get a bit passionate about it, but please don't take it as patronizing or mocking or hateful because that's not what I mean. And if it happens to come across that way, it's only directed at the situation as a whole, and not a single target. So if you disagree with me, you can certainly let me know in the comments, but hopefully with the same rational treatment that I want to give you. So with that being said, let's begin. You're now watching Because Geek. But quickly before we get started, let me tell you about Amino. Amino is a mobile app where you can find tons of communities for anything that you're into. And of course, I'm in the Game of Thrones community. I love how the content is endless there, with tons of theories, quizzes, and polls to keep you entertained and help you learn more about this awesome fandom. I've just created a post to discuss if Cersei can actually cause more damage than the Night King. I will give anyone who participates a shout out in one of my following videos. And to participate in this Game of Thrones Amino discussion, just click the link in the description or pin comment and follow the prompts to download Amino for free on iOS or Android. You can also just search your app store for it, and then once you're in, search for Game of Thrones. Then you can find me there and follow me by searching my username BecauseGeek. Thank you to Amino for sponsoring this video. Now back to it. It's not over yet. Even though this episode had a lot of good things in it, there's still a lot of disappointment going around in the fandom. And I get it, I completely get it. I felt it too. But we gotta remember that we still have half of the season left. I mean, yeah, it's really hard to believe that the battle against Cersei could keep us farther at the edge of our seats than the battle against the dead, but who knows? We can't really judge it properly until we've seen the rest of it. They did do an amazing job with episode 2, so there's a slight chance that they can pull that off again. Remember to check out my Amino post on this if you want to discuss it. Oh, and I did see this tweet that's been shared around that everyone thought was a legitimate hint that the Night King's plot was not over, because it seemed to have been posted by Vladimir Furdik, the guy who plays the Night King, who has given us legitimate hints about the Night King before. But after the tweet went viral, the owner of the account edited their bio to say that it was just a fan page. So that was disappointing. To add to that though, David Benioff himself said in the behind the scenes video that So this is the culmination of one of the key storylines in, in the whole show. So I'm going to say that he really means that. Either way, I'm personally going to keep my expectations very, very low from now on. Because I feel like I will be able to enjoy the next few episodes a lot better this way. If there's no cool twist, then I won't be disappointed. And if there is, well, it'll be a delightful surprise. The good stuff. What the entire production team accomplished was nothing short of amazing, and that is clearly an understatement. Game of Thrones made history once again with 55 days worth of continuous night shoots. They all said they hated it and would never do it again, but they were as proud as they should be. And their hard work needs all of the recognition in the world. Let's raise our glasses to the director of this episode, Miguel Saposchnik, to Ramin Jawadi for his unmatched musical talent, to the VFX team, the sound team, the costumes and props teams, to the actors and extras and basically everyone. Thank you all so much for giving us this amazing, gorgeous behemoth of an episode. The build-up at the beginning was excellent for me, with the continuous shots of the camera following Sam, then Tyrion grabbing his wine, then Bran being taken to the godswood. I also loved the suspense of staring into the darkness and hearing the sounds that the dead were making in the distance. I love that creepiness of it all. The visuals of all of the Araks being lit on fire was amazing. I know a lot of people have complained about how dark everything was, and for a lot of it, I get it. It was pretty annoying. But come on, I can't deny how cool it was to not be able to see that giant that the Thraki guy ran into until the very last second. Yeah. At death, I mean, it was time. Although it was a bit cliché, it still felt realistic enough as a consequence of saving Sam. And I don't know if it was a coincidence or a callback, but I really liked that he died just like Jor Mormont, stabbed in the back, and both having the Lord Commander title at the time. And even cutting to Sam in between was the same. I enjoyed the tension of the trench not lighting up. And yes, it was pretty obvious that he was going to work eventually once Mel got to it, 
but I still felt the tension. Now, I know a lot of people hated Liana Mormont's death, but I'll admit it was my guilty pleasure. I loved watching it. I know it would have been impossible for her to move after all her bones were broken like that, but I was able to suspend my disbelief for that bit. She had one of, if not the most, badass death I've ever seen on the show. Not only because of how it was executed, but also the fact that it was the smallest character against the largest one. I like that concept. Also, for a second, I did think that he was going to bite her head off and accidentally chew on that dragonglass dagger that she had on her, killing himself. That would have been more realistic, but uh, too gruesome to watch, I guess. Alright, so here, I actually mumbled the word beautiful to myself when I saw the shot. And also Melisandre's shot with the fire in her eyes. Arya's fighting skills were awesome. Not much else to say about this. Beric and the Hound showing up to save Arya is how you do character saving right. You set it up before you do it. They showed us Beric and the Hound running after Arya early enough for us to forget about them. But also, thanks to seeing that, we were able to fully believe that they could have been at the right place to save Arya just in time. Excuse me for using the word epic here, but that's what that dragon battle was. We had been waiting so long to see this and it was satisfying. I was actually having an anxiety attack when Viserion was trying to bite Jon. And I'll give the episode this. It kept me entertained and immersed enough to the point where I didn't even realize that an hour and 20 minutes had gone by. The in-between stuff. This is hard for me to say because I love Saposhnik, but apart from certain shots, the whole episode didn't really have a Saposhnik feel to me. And yes, you could call this nitpicking, but I felt like his special touch was missing, and the editing was a bit weird in places. I can't blame the guy though, he was given some pretty tough stuff to work with, so there's only so much you can squeeze out of that. The library scene felt really odd to me at first. It felt like I was watching a completely different show, but it grew on me after. I appreciated the slowing down of the pace of the battle, and I guess it's not that improbable that whites could be roaming around aimlessly inside of the castle since they were infiltrating it through every nook and cranny. I also watched the behind the scenes videos and got a better understanding of this scene. It was a Poshnik who wanted to use different genres for different parts of the battle, and this one was survival horror. I can live with it. Beric's sword throwing was epic, even if it wasn't realistic, but his death was underwhelming. I get that his purpose was to die for Arya, and while theorizing, we built him up more than we should have but he could have still done more than just stop a few whites in a hallway. I would have rather seen him maybe die to a White Walker instead while helping Arya get to the Night King at the very end, instead of just helping Arya get to Mel, but yeah. Burning the Night King. I'm torn about that smile. I'm not sure if I like it or not because I feel like it turned a badass moment into a Marvel-style joke, but I guess I can live with it. It's not that bad. And it was kind of fun. The dead waking up in the crypts was underwhelming as well, but that's more than likely thanks to how much everyone was hyping it up before the episode. We were all expecting it, so it lost its element of surprise. And it wasn't as important of a moment as we thought it would be. Still, I'm putting it in this section because it was pretty cool to watch. And the mummy looking white seemed realistic to me. And yes, yes, I've heard the argument of how could they have broken through a stone coffin when they couldn't break through a wooden crate. But again, willing to suspend my disbelief for this. I could have sworn Sansa and Tyrion were going to commit suicide. I'm putting it in the in-between section because I love that they got a moment together. I wanted to see more of that, so I was happy with it in that sense. And it was cute how Tyrion kissed her hand. But I didn't like how I couldn't understand what they were planning to do. I felt confused watching it and it kind of took away from my enjoyment of it. Jon against Viserion. Yes, it has a bunch of inconsistencies like the dragon being able to break walls one second and not being able to the next. The yelling at the dragon was silly, and no, John was not saying go to Arya, I refuse to believe that because they would have mentioned it in the behind the scenes videos. And in fact they mentioned that they wanted us to forget about Arya, so I highly doubt that they would make John remind us of her. But I'm putting John against Viserion in this section because, damn, ignoring all of that, it was so cool to watch. This undead dragon leaking blue fire stepping all over the Winterfell courtyard. I've had similar desktop wallpapers on my computer lately, and this scene felt like bringing those to life. I also loved it as a nod to the fantasy trope of having a little human knight face off against a huge dragon. Theon's last scene. Man. Okay, I loved his entire arc. 
It was one of, if not the best, character arcs of the entire show, and he was the MVP when it came to protecting Bran. It was super satisfying for him to finally get that chance to fully redeem himself. And yet, his death lacked so much creativity. They could have given him so much more than that. Have him kill at least one White Walker before the Night King steps in. Give us a bit of hope before you yank it away from us instead of removing the impact or shock that it could have had with that obviously fatal charge at the Night King. Oh well. You might see a pattern here. Yes, I did want more people to fight the White Walkers. I think a lot of you will agree with it being super lame that we saw them do nothing. I think Melisandre's death was okay. She was waiting this whole time to finish her purpose so she could finally die. I see that. But I would have preferred it if she actually sacrificed herself while helping. Maybe creating that big-ass fire could have taken all of her life force out of her, killing her right after. And that fire should have caused more damage. I will just add here that I didn't think we needed an explanation for how she got those powers. It made enough sense to me that she went to Volantis and learned it there from other Red Priests. The bad stuff. It was kind of strange that they were going to send the Dothraki out to charge with no Dragonglass at all. And they didn't know that Mel would come to help, so that charge was doomed from the start. It was definitely some bad battle tactics, just to make some nice visuals for the audience. Now, to me, it always seemed like the Dothraki just charged without anyone commanding them. You know, like they got so excited about their fiery Arax they couldn't help themselves. And that would have been a better explanation for what happened. But the only one who looked a bit weirded out was Jorah. No one else wondered why the Dothraki charged before it was time, so I guess it was a pre-planned move. There was too much plot armor, and more deus ex machina than I've ever seen in my life, which goes completely against what Game of Thrones was supposed to be all about. The lack of it was what made it stand out from the rest of the shows. Real stakes, real consequences. Those are all gone now turning this show into one of the many other generic fantasy shows that we've seen before. If you still enjoy that, then by all means enjoy it, but I really don't. And sure, some characters did die, and you don't have to make it as realistic as everyone dies, but don't freaking show them literally dying one second and then find the next. Like when Brienne went down, when Jon was surrounded by whites, when Danny was also surrounded by whites, when Jaime goes down, when Sam was on the ground crying untouched. It just gets so annoying after a while. I can forgive all the plot armor before this battle because they all needed to be here. But plot armor for this battle? No, that's ridiculous. Like, I was literally screaming in my head, just freaking kill a character already, oh my god. I got excited so many times when I thought they were actually going to do it. An example of realistic consequences and stakes would have been for Sam to die as a consequence of John needing to get to Bran. But there were no realistic stakes or consequences in this episode. And for the record, just so you don't think I'm unfair, I think the way Ed saved Sam here was perfect and realistic enough for me. Arya saving the Hound with her arrow was realistic as well. I only hate the saves that are just so clearly unrealistic that I can't suspend my disbelief even if I tried. Grey Worm should have died. It would have given more meaning to Melisandre telling him Valar Morghulis. I know that's how people from Essos talk, but it seemed like an unnecessary line to add after realizing that it had no payoff. Melisandre should have given her life in order to help, as I've said, not just decide to die after. We should have seen either Brienne, Podrick, or Jaime die while protecting one another. Gendry could have died or been fatally injured as a replacement for that pep talk that Arya needed. Someone should have died in the crypts. If you don't want to kill Tyrion or Sansa, that's fine, but at least kill Varys or Missandei. I'm starting to think that some of these characters lived just for the sake of living, and not for plot armor because I don't see anything left in some of their plots, and I honestly hope that the next few episodes prove me wrong, but this is how I feel right now. Bran basically did nothing as well, was he trying to lure the Night King with his ravens? That seems unnecessary because the Night King was already supposed to know where he was. Maybe Bran was the one who didn't know where the Night King was and he was using the ravens to find him. It would be cool to get a different explanation for this later, but I'll be keeping my expectations low. I don't know how to use it. Sticking with the pointy end. We've gotten too many line callbacks. Stop, just please stop. It was cool at first, but now it's just gotten old, and it makes me want to roll my eyes every time. I'm sorry, it just does. Going along with that last point, they missed such a good opportunity to give Sansa a purpose. They could have had her protect her people by stabbing more whites or helping them escape somehow. 
too many main characters had no purpose or a very underwhelming purpose in this battle. I also did not cry at all, and I was shocked. It's really not that hard to make me cry. And I thought it might have been the wine I was drinking or making jokes with my guests while watching, but I rewatched it sober and by myself later, and I still didn't feel anything. I cried during the Brienne scene every time I watched and rewatched it. So yeah, I don't know. I didn't cry about Jorah or Theon. They actually made me laugh a little bit, in fact. Melisandre's death did make me feel a little bit, but other than that, I just didn't feel it at all with this episode, and that saddened me more than the deaths themselves. There was no insight gained into the story by defeating the Night King. There was no lesson learned, no deeper meaning. Nothing changed. There was more, but they're all nitpicky things that won't add a lot of value to this video, so let's move on. 